Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit today about one of the most popular seed treatments that there is in the entire world, but how if misused, it can be an issue causing some problems in the rest of the environment. So we really want to get into exactly how this product should be used, and if it's used right, it's very safe to everyone involved. Well, something else that could be really important at the start of the season is using a pre-emerge herbicide, but we get lots of questions every year about how can I make those pre's work better? Some years they work great, other years they're not quite as effective. What are the secrets? We'll reveal some of those today. We also have a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk just a little bit about phone apps. Well, one thing about uh, agriculture is we are way ahead of the game in technology. In terms of you ride in any cab around the country, chances are you're going to see computer monitors and GPS and all this stuff. Auto steer. And you say, my goodness, we've got tens of thousands of dollars of stuff here. Well, you do, but farmers are using it every day. When you're out in a field, there are many things that you need to know and information that you need to have right at your fingertips. This is where phone apps come into play. It's awesome. I mean, your phone can be GPS. Your phone, just today for the show, we were using it as a level. Uh, there are all kinds of different apps that can come in really handy, and even at Ag PhD, we've developed a few different apps that could help you if you're a farmer. Well, it's kind of interesting. Whenever I'm out in a field and there's harvest going on or harvest has already taken place, I like to look around in the soil and see exactly how many kernels of grain landed on the ground. I'm interested in harvest loss. Do we need to adjust that combine so we aren't losing as much or are we doing a good job? The only way to know is to check. And you need to have some kind of rule of thumb as far as how many seeds on the ground, how much is that really going to cost you per acre in terms of bushels lost and dollars lost. So we developed the Ag PhD Harvest Loss app so you could type in your crop and how many kernels you're counting in a square foot on the ground, and then determine what your loss is. Well, that's on the harvest side. Let's go all the way back to when we put the crop in the ground. We also have a planting population app, and both the harvest loss and the planting population apps we developed in conjunction with Case IH. But with this planting population thing, you can go out and count the number of seeds you have in one one thousandth of an acre and determine what your stand is. We have a number of other calculations that are in on that planting population app. So it's, it's another nice one and all of our Ag PhD apps are free. Well, speaking of calculations, if you're out doing some drainage, we've got a drainage app that's just fantastic in terms of typing in uh, what you need for slope and pipe size and all these calculations that you would normally either use a slide rule or spend a whole bunch of time trying to figure out on your own. Uh, so our drainage app has been a pretty handy tool as you're improving drainage in your field. Perhaps our most popular app is our field guide app. We developed that one in conjunction with FMC. But anyway, we have weeds on there, we have insects on there. So if you want to know, for example, today's weed of the week, how best to control that, you can go into that app, the field guide app. You can select that particular weed and it will tell you for Darren and me, our opinions on how best to control that in corn, soybeans, and wheat. You also get a little bit of information, just general information on the weed and some pictures as well. Well, the app that I use the most, Brian, is the fertilizer removal app. When we're planning, how are we going to fertilize this crop and, and how many nutrients did this last crop take off the ground? What I look at is our fertilizer removal app. You can type in any crop, you can type in your yield, of what you either got in the field this year or what you're expecting for next year and it'll tell you exactly how many nutrients you need and not only how many nutrients that grain is going to remove for example when you harvest 200 bushel corn how many pounds of fertilizer does that take out of your ground but how many pounds of nutrients it takes to raise the stalk so you have a nice healthy plant standing there right until harvest. This is a great app. It's a great tool, like I say, as you're building your fertilizer plan uh, going into next year. Take a look at the fertilizer removal app, type in your crops and your yield goals, get a good idea of where to start. So while a lot of kids may be using their smartphones just for playing games, 
for me and hopefully for you in business, you're using the phone as a business tool. There are a number of different apps that can help you on the farm, including the free Ag PhD apps. Well, one of the weeds that you may find on our Field Guide app is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. Looking to maximize yield? QuickRoots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. QuickRoots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. QuickRoots is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. Capella corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. Expect Capella design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's a head above the rest. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. With spring right around the corner, get your Case IH equipment ready with Titan Machinery's Uptime Maintenance Program. Uptime is Titan's preventative maintenance inspection, designed to eliminate costly downtime during the short planting season. Our technicians average nearly 10 years of experience and use a comprehensive Case IH factory checklist to find potential problems before they slow you down. Use your Titan Access account and make no payment and pay no interest until spring 2014 for qualifying uptime specials. Plant worry-free with Titan Machinery. Better solutions. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. Every spring we get farmers who complain about how their pre-emerge herbicides work. So today we're going to talk just a little bit about how you can make your pre-emerge herbicides work better regardless of the environmental conditions. Well obviously last year in our area anyway we had some good spring moisture and the pre's worked great. I have never talked to so many guys that said oh man that was the best thing I ever did. In fact there are some guys that said I didn't even have to spray post-emerge that pre worked so good. Don't get your expectations that high. When we're using a pre-emerge herbicide, it's not to get 100% control of weeds for the entire year. What we're really trying to do is stop that early weed pressure that really robs a lot of yield, and, and that sets us up for better yields later on. What we're talking about with these pre-emerge herbicides is either shoot inhibitors or root inhibitors. So where is the shoot on the weed? Well, in a lot of cases, we, we're talking about little grass plants or we're talking about small seeded broadleaves and they're going to germinate in that top inch of soil, sometimes even the top half inch. So we want to keep our pre-emerge herbicides relatively shallow if they are shoot inhibitors. And the shoot inhibitors are mainly the corn herbicides that you might think of like Harness, Surpass, Outlook, Dual, many of those types of products are shoot inhibitors. On the other hand, many of the soybean products like the yellows, the DNAs, the Treflans, Sonalans, Prowls, those products are root inhibitors. The root obviously is going to come out just a little bit lower than what the shoot is. So if you've got shoot inhibitors that you're dealing with, you've got to keep those shallow. The root inhibitors can be a little bit deeper, but even so, we want to kill the plant when it's small. Well, where is that root going to be? It's going to start at a half an inch or an inch and it's going to go down a little bit. So regardless of the product that you're using for a pre-emerge herbicide, we just don't want to bury it. We want to for sure keep it in the top couple inches of soil. That's one of the biggest keys. Okay, well the easy alternative is you say, well I'll just leave it on top of the ground. Yeah, that can be done, but it takes some moisture 
to get that down into the soil. So if we're in a no-till situation, for example, it's gonna take some moisture to get through the residue and wash off the product off the residue and then get it into the soil and then get it into the wheat. Yeah, but so, here's, here's the whole problem, Darren. All these big companies will say, well, with just a half an inch of moisture, you oh, can activate our product. Well, no, you can activate it, but you're not gonna get it all the way down and activate it if your soil's dry to start with. Well, the other thing is, is when do you need to put it on? Well, you can put it on after you plant. You are really reliable on catching a timely rain to get it to work after you plant. So we try to get our pre's on at least a couple of weeks ahead of when we're going to plant so we have a window where we can catch some rain. What you can do is just move up your planting date by a couple of weeks and then spray your herbicide right after. So for example, on our farm, the first date I can plant my corn is April 10th, according to crop insurance. So what I will do is I'll go out and plant some then and I'll spray right after I plant. Well in our area, May 1st, May 5th, somewhere in that range is usually when a lot of those early season weeds start. So no big deal if I can plant April 10th. But here's the thing, if I'm planting May 1st and now I'm gonna spray right after I plant, now I have a lot of risk because I've gotta have a rain almost instantly, otherwise those weeds are gonna germinate and they're gonna get big. And once they get any size to them at all, there's no way that you have the reach back ability with any pre-emerge herbicide to kill those weeds. You've got to use a good rate to those pre's if you're going to count on much residual. And this is one of the things that, you know, as soon as we had Roundup Ready crops and Liberty Link crops, a lot of guys said, you know, I've got such a good post-emerge option, I don't need to spend all that money on my pre-emerge option. And it was hard to argue with that when corn was $2 or less. You know, yeah, maybe we could cut that $20 treatment out uh, or, or at least cut it back to a half rate or something like that because, wow, we're only getting two bucks for the corn. But those days are done. We're getting good prices for our corn, good prices for our soybeans. We need to use full rates of pre's for a couple of reasons. One, economically it makes sense. We're going to get a good return on investment. We're going to get higher yields if we can lengthen that control out and stop weeds before they're even out of the ground. But two, we've got a lot of resistant weeds that we're fighting. And if we can stop those weeds so we don't have to use harsh post-emerge treatments, uh, that's a good thing too. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about these different pre's and where to place them and everything. We've also discussed no-till a little bit, but what we want you to keep in mind is some products fit in no-till and other products, they just plain don't. So for example, Treflan, Sonalan, Eradicate, all those products have to be literally instantly incorporated. If you don't have them incorporated within a minute or two, you are already starting to lose them. And I know the label will probably tell you 24 hours you have to incorporate them. Look, you can incorporate 24 hours later. All we're telling you is a bunch of your herbicides already missing. So why do that? Switch from Treflan or Sonalan over to Prowl. Prowl is the no-till product. It's basically the no-till version of Treflan and Sonalan. And instead of Eradicane, you can certainly use something else, Dual, Harness, Surpass, Outlook, one of those types of products. So the key thing is just making sure you know how long can my product sit out there before I have to either have rain or incorporation on it. Okay, one last thing that I wanted to address is just basically starting clean. Yes, if you're doing tillage, you've started clean. You've wiped out all the weeds that are there today. If you're in no-till, make sure you are controlling everything that is there. That means you might have to throw in some Banville. You might have to use Verdict instead of straight Outlook. Do something that gives you burn down ability or burn down capacity when you have some weeds that are already up. And when we talk about tillage and trying to eliminate weeds, some guys get worried that, oh, my weeds are a little big. I better till just a little deeper to make sure I completely take them out. Well, again, the problem with that is we don't want to bury the herbicide. We want to keep it real shallow. What I usually like seeing guys do is go out with a field cultivator at seven or eight miles an hour. And a lot of guys will say, whoa, I can't field cultivate at seven or eight miles an hour. Well, you know what? If you can't, that means you're probably going too deep. So we want you going shallow. One of the keys for us on our farm was the wheel tracks. What we'll, what we'll do is we'll actually have extensions behind where the wheel tracks are so we can lower our shanks down just a little bit, lower our sweeps down a little bit. That really helps. Then you don't have to run the whole machine deep. So those are kind of our general tips when we're talking about making the pre's work better. You absolutely can do it on your farm. Just making make sure you're using the right product. Don't get it too deep. Use a good strong rate. And again, start clean. Well, pre's will work very well at controlling most weeds, but will they stop our weed of the week? Can you identify this week's weed? I wish I could apply all the PK and micronutrients this crop needs at planting. You can. 
When your soils are not excessively nutrient deficient, you can apply a whole season of PK and micronutrients when you plant and get top yields at harvest. AgroLiquid's exceptional nutrient compatibility and superior efficiency allows you to prescription apply everything your crop needs safely and conveniently. Research proves it. For more info, go to agroliquid.com. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com slash livestock. Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. For lower cost, higher production, see your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Ask about the best production-built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport to easy use. 12 to 85 foot widths, heavy-duty 4x8 3-8 inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco Land Rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss, eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Visit NorthCountryMarketing.biz or call. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Brian, this term may sound a little strange to most farmers. Neonicotinoids. Are you using neonicotinoids on your farm? Well, you may say, I'm not even sure what that is. But the answer is probably yes. If you're raising a crop, chances are you're using some neonicotinoid insecticides in your seed treatment program. Years ago, there used to be a lot of harmful insecticides that were used in agriculture, but fortunately, they've been replaced by relatively safe things like the pyrethroids, which come from a flower, and the neonicotinoids that are in the chemical family of nicotine. And while I realize nicotine is harmful if you're smoking it every day, it's actually pretty safe for you to handle when it's on a seed treatment. Now, don't get me wrong, we want you using personal protective equipment and and using good caution, reading the label, and all of those types of things. Well, these neonicotinoids, specifically Poncho, Gaucho, and Cruiser, they are way safer than the old insecticides we used to deal with. They're way more effective than the old insecticides we used to have as well. And they're systemic. Plus, they really don't cost a whole lot of money. So when you add it all up, these things are great for agriculture. They've increased worldwide production of ag products by billions of dollars in our estimation. But here's the problem. There have been some talks lately about countries and even continents banning neonicotinoids. Well, if you would Google search neonicotinoid insecticides, you're going to read a whole lot of bad stuff that people are saying. Oh, these things are terrible. Oh, they're hurting bees. They're doing all these bad things. You know, when we're using them in agriculture, our primary use is seed treatments where they're safely down beneath the soil, and nothing else above ground is really going to come in contact with them. So we aren't seeing really any issues that way. Where we can potentially see issues is when neonicotinoids get used post-emerge. And when companies have products that are very successful, I understand the temptation to say, you know, let's use them in some other ways too. Let's use them post-emerge. We can add them in. We'll get another mode of action in our post-emerge sprays, and they'll have some residual control. Yeah, they will. And they can be helpful post-emerge too. But they're so valuable to us as seed treatment insecticides, to me, it's just not worth the risk of using them post-emerge, and that's where we've run into some problems. Just a few months ago, Darren and I were out in the state of Oregon. We were literally on the site where a worldwide controversy started because a guy decided he was going to spray something like 10 trees with a neonicotinoid product post-emerge. He shouldn't have done it, but he did. 
He killed some bees. It's literally worldwide press. Europe has now banned neonicotinoids for the next couple of years. The state of Oregon, they've also banned neonicotinoids for a while. It's ridiculous. It's because one guy sprayed 10 trees. Who cares? But the point is, for all of us in agriculture, we've got to be smart. and We've got to realize that a whole bunch of people are governing us that have no idea about farming. So why are we risking the most valuable seed treatment we've got in the world over some post-emerge sprays? Quit spraying it post-emerge. There are no alternatives for seed treatment insecticides. There's nothing that's even close to it that's going to be at that safety level or that kind of control. That's how important this is for us. So our advice to you is quit using Belay, quit using Endo, go, quit using leverage, and I know these chemical companies aren't going to be real happy when they hear me say that, but I don't care. We need to save those neonicotinoids for pre-emerge use, use on the seed. Quit using them post, and then all these controversies over killing bees, it's pretty much all going to go away. Everybody's going to forget about it, and then we can keep using our valuable seed treatment in the right fashion, not using it post. Well, we aren't saying there's anything wrong with those products inherently. They aren't bad products. They're fine. They just aren't post-emerge treatments that we should be using because there are just lots of alternatives that could be used instead. Right. This is one of the most important things we want you to think about on your farm next year. But another important thing is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our weed of the week is a biennial plant. It's common mullein. This isn't a, a weed that we're normally fighting out in cultivated fields. What we're seeing common mullein is ditches, uh, roadsides, pastures, CRP, this kind of thing. And common mullein, like Brian said, is a biennial. So we'll have one year where it's in that rosette stage, where it's low to the ground. You'll see just this little circular uh, growth of plant. It's storing up energy for the bolt stage in year two and it is so important to kill that weed before it starts going to seed because one common mullein plant can have 100,000 seeds or more. Yeah, the good news here is it's not that difficult to control if you have a regular herbicide program. I would suggest Tordon if it was me, but you certainly could use high doses of 2,4-D in multiple applications. You shouldn't have a lot of problem. It is better if you can get this in the first year, the rosette stage, because then it's not going to go to seed. Well, Once we always it's put get that those, seed head on, you're in trouble. We get those questions about, well, okay, it's, it looks like it's already starting to make seed. Can I just hurt the germination on that seed? <laughs> you know what? Some of those seeds are still going to germinate if you wait too long. So just make sure you get it under control early. Now, if it did get out into your fields, we really like Sharpen in combination with Roundup in a burn down. So if you can get it burned down on top and get a little bit of root activity, you should do pretty and well. And Sharpen can be used in front of corn, soybeans, or wheat. It's just keep that rate down on soybeans one ounce or less. Post-emerge, you don't have a whole lot of options. In soybeans, Roundup's about it. In corn, status is probably the best thing, especially if you throw a little atrazine with it. And in wheat, we'd probably suggest, as much as we hate using 2,4-D in wheat, a little bit of 2,4-D would wipe it out. Husky will have a little bit of activity, Especially if you get it in the rosette great. stage, if you can use that high rate of husky, it's going to work pretty well. Otherwise, good fertility programs and a good thick stand yeah. is your best defense. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. Should I get set up for in-furrow applications on my corn? In today's Iron Talk, I'll discuss a few of the reasons that we use an in-furrow application setup on our corn planter, and why you may consider it for something that you may not have thought of before. 
We've been doing infurrow applications of liquid fertilizer for years on our farm. We've also used Capture LFR liquid insecticide for a long time too. If you don't have an insect problem and you think that you've got a different soil fertility program that doesn't require using a pop-up fertilizer, you may be thinking that infurrow applications aren't necessary for your farm. However, there are a couple newer concepts that we've been using in furrow that we're going to do more acres of in 2014. First of all, there's headline. Yep, the same fungicide that can be used foliar in your corn can be used right in furrow. In replicated trials on our farm, we gained about 6.6 bushels of corn putting headline in furrow. That's enough to get us excited, and we'll definitely be doing more of that. We also tried a new biological product called Challenge 2050 last year that requires an in furrow or at least 2x2 placement. And there are other products coming down the road that will need to be placed close to the seed as well. My point is that in furrow applications aren't just for starter fertilizer anymore. And as you work on your cropping plans for 2014, you may be adding an in furrow system or finding more things to run through the one you have. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com livestock. If a new machine storage building or shop has been on your mind, it's time to call Morton Buildings. Now through the end of February, take advantage of discount pricing during our Building Value Days sales event. For over 110 years, Morton has served the American farmer with quality buildings for a variety of uses that meet your needs and style. Give us a call or visit us online and join generations of customers who've discovered the quality and dependability of a Morton building. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. I wish I could apply all the PK and micronutrients this crop needs at planting. You can. When your soils are not excessively nutrient deficient, you can apply a whole season of PK and micronutrients when you plant and get top yields at harvest. AgroLiquid's exceptional nutrient compatibility and superior efficiency allows you to prescription apply everything your crop needs safely and conveniently. Research proves it. For more info, go to agroliquid.com. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all-new s commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full-functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. 75 to 95 percent of soil applied phosphorus may be tied up and made unavailable to plants. Farmers use organic proteins and other fertilizer innovations to ensure their crops are fed properly. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.